This video shows interactive physically based manipulations of virtual objects on the responsive workbench, a high resolution stereoscopic tabletop display. Typically, the user at the responsive workbench is head tracked to see a perspective correct view of the virtual environment. But for these shots, we track the camera instead of the user's head. This makes it very difficult for the user to manipulate virtual objects since he sees a distorted view of the scene. To give a perspective correct view to the camera and to the user, we render the scene simultaneously on two separate graphics displays. For the remainder of this video, we record the scene in monoscopic view from the first display while showing a stereoscopic view to the user at the workbench. Our physical simulation handles arbitrary, rigid, three-dimensional polyhedral objects with an emphasis on contact, collision and friction handling. Objects are manipulated by forces. Our basic interaction tool uses eight springs connected to the corners of a virtual cube, which is rigidly attached to the user's hand. When the user picks up an object, these springs get attached to the object, allowing the user to perform six degree of freedom manipulations. Since users of our system interact with objects solely by applying forces, our environment became inherently multi-handed and multi-user capable. Tasks like handing over an object or two-handed interactions are naturally resolved by the superposition of the applied forces. Now we show an assembly sequence for a one-cylinder engine consisting of a crankshaft, crankshaft bearing, connecting rod, piston and cylinder. Here, the user picked up the crankshaft with two hands and tries to slide it into the crankshaft bearing. Please note how the crankshaft is guided by the bearing block surface into the bearing. After the crankshaft is in place, we turn off collision detection between crankshaft and bearing and to replace these geometrical constraints by an axial constraint. This greatly reduces the number of constraints in our system and results in a perfect axis bearing attachment. Now we mount the connecting rod on the crankshaft, which turns out to be a little difficult, like in real life. For the attachment of the piston, the connecting rod is frozen to simplify the insertion of the piston's bolt into the rod. Once the piston is in place, we freeze it in the proper orientation and release the connecting rod. Now we are picking up the cylinder with two hands to have more control over this large object. The cylinder slides along the piston until the user manages to slide the cylinder onto the piston. Now the cylinder is frozen into place, the piston released and we have a functioning one cylinder engine.
user interface elements like the simple slider in the front controlling the transparency of the cylinder are fully integrated into our environment. This extends the multi-handed and multi-user capability of our system seamlessly to the user interface. We showed how a physical simulation can be successfully integrated in a virtual environment to support multiple hands and users. Application areas that particularly benefit from such an environment are assembly planning and assembly testing as shown in this video. With the integration of a physical simulation with the responsive workbench, we took a big step towards more feedback and more realism in virtual environments.